start out with a, a wax form of some type. Um, once you have that object, uh, the next stage is making it so that, so that you can actually cast it in, in bronze. Uh, so you add the gating, a cup, and this one is called a vent. If this point right here wasn't vented to the top, um, there would become a, a large air chamber there and cause it to not cast. Once that's all attached, you start dipping it into a slurry machine. And it stays mixing year round pretty much. It's a very, very fine mixture. Colloidal silica, which is liquefied silica, and silica flour. I, I liken it to a nutty bar. How you dip chocolate into, or dip the ice cream into chocolate and then you roll it into nuts. Well, in the same way, you dip this into the slurry, you pull it out, and then you dip it into sand. These two beds right here are called fluidizing beds, and this is where you dip your, your slurry in it. It's a very hard, hard surface. When I fluidize it, you see it's up. It turns into almost liquid. If you imagine your wax piece dipped in the slurry and now dipped into the sand, and you can see that the sand is starting to attach to it. This is probably the first or second dips on it. It accumulates uh, eventually into uh, a mass like this, which is about eight dips. The next step of the process would be to take that ceramic shell, tap a little hole in the end of it, and put it into the, uh, the burnout kiln. The burnout kiln heats all the wax that's inside of this and drains it out. We stack up all the ceramic shells once we've knocked the end of the cups off, turn on the, 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 the burner up in the top part up in here. It gets the heat going real fast, and then we drop this down on top of the ceramic shells and it almost immediately begins to melt. Once it melts, it collects down, flows out, and comes out this little tongue over here. And uh, we usually catch it in, in uh, containers. We're heating it up to 2,100 degrees. That's the temperature when it comes out. That's its uh, molten state. It's, it's, it melts at 17 to 1900. Uh, we keep it at 2100 so that it'll pour fluidly into to the shell. Uh, the shells are what's in this second uh, unit, which is a preheat kiln. And it preheats the shell so that it stays elastic enough so that when the hot metal hits it, it doesn't uh, fracture because of the thermal displacement. Each time you add bronze to it, what Debbie's doing up there now, she's putting the bronze up on top of the uh, furnace to warm it up a little bit. If there's any moisture in it, it's like dropping uh, water into a, a deep fryer. It'll, it'll splash back out, and it, and it has happened in, in the past.
results. This is, you know, from here, pour the bronze into this, the shell gets broken off, and then you end up with, with something that looks, looks like this, and there's parts of the shell that are still attached to it. The cup acts, acts as a nice funnel to funnel the bronze into the, into the body of the, the piece. And then once you've got that and get the shell off of it, you take it and you cut the, the vent and the gating off of it. I guess all of this can be considered gating, essentially, uh, but this would be your, 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 uh, your main gate. Cut all that loose and then you end up with your, your piece and you smooth it out. And you go from, say, this, this stage, uh -huh. you get all of this white stuff off if you want okay. to get it. And then you sand the glass. This is a, a pretty much a finished product. product. Um, Debbie's put um, a, a patina, a patination is, is um, something that goes into the, into the metal. Some of them are surface, some of them are su subsurface. Um, the dark is a, um, a, a mild acid that actually goes into it and causes it to be dark. It's a um, potash sulfurated, so it's a sulfur-like acid. That, that etches into it.